Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the GPD Micro PC, which is a small computer with a 6-inch 720p display, Celeron N4100 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and an unusual design even by many PC standards in that uh, it doesn't have a touchscreen display. Instead, we've got this touchpad with support for multi-touch gestures. Uh, you can also do left and right mouse clicks over here on the side, and a kind of thumb type keyboard here. Uh, you can find more details about the specs and target audience and performance at lilliputing.com or check out some other videos on my YouTube channel. But in this video, I just wanted to take a quick look at the keyboard and sort of what it's like to use it. Uh, while this is designed maybe for IT administrators who are going to be typing in you know, a couple of commands at a time, you could use it for typing longer documents, emails, uh, other things, but I don't find it to be a particularly pleasant experience, and I'll show you a little bit of why that is. Uh, first of all, the keys are definitely smaller than you would find on a typical keyboard, and that makes it difficult to sort of do two handed, 10 finger typing. Uh, the layout is also a little interesting. There's not a lot of space between the keys. The keys are raised a little bit, so you can feel where one ends and the other begins. And there's a little bump here on the F and the J keys so that theoretically you should be able to find them without looking down. But I find that because everything's so close together and because of the arrangement of the keys, I'm often looking at the keyboard when I'm typing, which is uh, a little unusual for me since I'm usually a touch typist. There's um, a backlit keyboard, which is a nice feature to have. I don't know how well you can see the difference there because it's fairly bright in this room. Let's see if it's any more if I move it back away from the light. Um, so in the dark, you should be able to see the keys re relatively easily by pressing function and the space bar to toggle that backlight. The there's not enough room to the side here to sort of fit everything that you would normally have on a full size keyboard. So we go B N M comma period J K L um, and the L is also a bracket, and then we've got the colon and semicolon, and your apostrophe and your quotation marks are up here, which is kind of an awkward location for them. So whenever I have to use those, it usually takes me a second to stop, think, press function, and then go up and hit those. Uh, we've got a delete and a backspace button, or right, delete and enter, um, and I believe delete and uh, function. So it's backspace and delete is the same key, basically. Uh, home page up, and these are often doubled up, so that's not too unusual. And then we've got screen brightness and volume buttons, which also serve as function F11, F12 keys. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 keys are above the keyboard and above one another, which is kind of unusual as well. So when we put it all together, what's the actual typing experience like? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to uh, typingtest.com, and I'm going to try the Aesop's Fables typing test. Let's just go ahead and maximize this. I'm not sure it makes a big difference, but... And first, let's go ahead and do thumb typing. Aesop was... All right, so we got 34 words a minute and one mistake, or actually 33 words a minute, one mistake, so about 32 words per minute adjusted speed. Now, for comparison, uh, I often get around 85 to 100 words a minute when I'm touch typing on a full-size keyboard. So uh, let's see if I try to use it more like a full-size keyboard with everything lying flat on the, on the table here, which is something you might not always be able to do with a handheld device like this, but uh, if you do, here's what that looks like.
Okay, well in that case, I got tripped up totally by the caps lock key. Uh, so the adjusted speed is horrible because I had so many errors. Um, I, I will tell you that typically I do a little bit faster when I'm doing that sort of uh, uh, traditional style as opposed to on my thumbs. Uh, typically I get around 30 words per minute thumb typing and around 35 words per minute when uh, typing this way. Uh, both of those are slower than I type on a smartphone. On a smartphone, I can often hit around 40 words a minute using just an on-screen keyboard. So uh, in terms of typing, I wrote out a blog post once for Lilliputing.com. Uh, took me three, four times longer to write a couple hundred words than it normally would. Found it kind of excruciating. So for the sort of work I do, it's a little difficult to consider this as a machine that I would want to use uh, for work. Uh, now, there are different things that you could do with it, though. You could use it for web browsing, you could use it for watching videos, you could use it for viewing and maybe even making some light edits to documents. Uh, it supports Windows subsystem for Linux, so you can use it for basic Linux terminal type commands. Uh, it ships with Windows 10 pre-installed, and as of the time that I'm shooting this video, there's not really great support for running uh, alternate operating systems. I've tried booting Ubuntu and other operating systems and they tend to have the screen is sideways and there might be some other problems. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend picking one up if that's what you wanted to do with it. But uh, as I mentioned, you can load Ubuntu or other command line operating systems using Windows subsystem for Linux. So let's go ahead and do like a, whoop, there was a typo there. Uh, top command. Uh, so you can see that it does support uh, pretty much anything that you can do with a larger Windows 10 machine. In terms of performance, again, you can find some benchmarks at lilliputing.com. It's not super fast, but it's not the slowest machine in this category that I've tested either. And so if you wanted to, you could plug in an external display, you could plug in a keyboard and a mouse, and you could just use it like a computer that has all your stuff on it that you can take with you and put it in your pocket. But if you were looking at it as a laptop replacement on its own, I think it's uh, the typing experience is really just a little bit more difficult. Uh, so it's really meant for, I think, short text input as opposed to uh, typing out your next novel or something. Now, that's me. It might be different for different people. If you are somebody who sort of cut your teeth working with BlackBerry devices, then you might find this style of keyboard much more comfortable than, say, an on-screen smartphone style keyboard. And you might not really be bothered by the fact that this doesn't have a touchscreen display. Uh, it's an interesting sort of proposition. It's got uh, maybe cheaper build quality. It's got uh, less powerful hardware than some of GPD's other devices. And it's got a keyboard that's a little bit more difficult to use. But it is really sort of purpose built for people who might be using it for IT or network administrator type purposes. And I know I've seen a lot of excitement from people who fall into that category. Uh, so while I have no, no particular use for the, uh, the serial port, um, it is something that I know other people are interested in using. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to continue testing this for a little while and I'll probably have some future videos showing general purpose performance when doing things like watching videos, playing games, surfing the web. But in this, in this video, I just really wanted to take a look at the keyboard and point out that it's usable. Um, but because of the fact that the keys are very small, very close together, and you actually have to press them pretty hard. Uh, also this caps lock key can trip you up if you're not looking. Um, I find that I look at the keyboard more than I look at what I'm typing, and that can be problematic. And then I have to sort of hunt and peck for certain keys. The more you use it, the more you get used to where they are, but it's uh, it's still a little bit of an awkward typing experience. So that is a first look at the keyboard on the GPT Micro PC. Check out lilliputing.com and uh, keep following us on YouTube for more details about this little computer and all sorts of other small form factor computing devices. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.